Uh, IB tests are on a scale of one to seven. Most colleges that I've looked at, pretty much every college in the United States uh, accepts IB courses, uh, a score of five will get you college credit. Butler and the University of Missouri, for example, you get a score in five in any of the classes that we offer here at Richwoods, you get three hours of college credit. You can get up to 28 hours at Missouri, I believe it was 25 at Butler. Uh, so that's the credits. And then there's this uh, intangible of being very well prepared. In talking to recent IB diploma graduates that are now either freshmen or sophomores in college, I hear the same thing over and over again. Yeah, when I got to my freshman year in college, I was like, wow, really wasn't as challenging as I'd expected it to be because I was so well prepared uh, through my time in the diploma program. And so if, if I am looking to uh, apply for the IB program at, here at Richwoods, what's, what's my next step? What's your next step? Well, within the next month or so, uh, probably right around the first part of November, on the Richwoods website, if you go and click under the Academies tab, that'll open up the IB homepage, uh, we're going to have all of the pertinent registration information regarding uh, informational meetings, dates, the actual application. All of that will be available online. Uh, we just need to finalize some specifics right now as to how that's going to look. Certainly we want to get out to the middle schools uh, all over the city of Peoria, uh, the ones that we can get into and talk to those eighth graders that might be interested in uh, becoming a part of the IV program here at Richwoods. Uh, for those that we may not be able to visit, and I've talked to several on the phone, we get inquiries all the time about getting their kid in here to the diploma program. Uh, certainly the website is a good source of information and will continue to be. All right, and as we add the IB program in our primary middle years, uh, it's going to be obviously more um, known throughout the district. So, sure. Yeah, unfortunately, it's several years down the road, but I know that when that time comes, uh, it really will pay off. I mean, that's, we're really looking forward to that already, even though it may be several years from now. All right, Travis Bowlby, IB coordinator here at Richwoods High School. We want to thank all of our IB coordinators for joining us on this episode of Remarkable Times. We hope you have learned something about IB uh, today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in our ne next episode. I'm Chris Copeland, Director of Public Relations for Remarkable Times. Dennis Egelmeyer here with our good friend Agbar Bryson from Harvesting Dreams to tell us about the annual event that focuses on African American males. So, uh, Agbar, what is the event? Well, it's the uh, African American Male Conference, which is going to be November 5th from 10 to about 2.30. Uh, we're inviting everyone to come out. Uh, even though it says African American male, we also are inviting the uh, ladies to come out. What is the purpose of the African American Male Conference? Well, this year the purpose is to uh, look at what's going on with what we call uh, the war that's going on. You know, all the crime that's going on in communities, uh, uh, the dropout rate. So we're going to be talking about the mindset. Uh, we're going to be talking about the self-handicapping, self-destructive behavior. We're going to have a, a video uh, that talks about that. And then, then we're going to have some individuals who are going to talk about what kind of impact uh, this has had upon them and their families. Tell us about the workshop and the presenters that are going to be at this year's event. Well, uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, we're going to have Chris McAfee. Uh, he's going to uh, do a workshop. Uh, I don't recall the title of his workshop, but it's going to be on this subject. Uh, Dr. Marvin Spiller uh, at Bradley is going to be there. And then we have a special guest, uh, William Polite. Uh, that's his real name, Polite. Uh, who's with the uh, Magic Johnson uh, uh, Educational uh, Institute. He's also going to be a, a special guest of ours, and he's, he's had some information and thing that he wants to do that talks about the, uh, the self-handicapping behavior. And then we're expecting uh, Cassandra Powell, who's usually uh, there uh, yearly. We're now here with Jeremy Shorter, who is an ambassador with Harvesting Dreams. Tell us exactly what does an ambassador do? 
Um, an ambassador is uh, pretty much a per person in leadership uh, in the Harvesting Dreams group. Uh, Persist of uh, staying in the hallway, uh, monitoring uh, students uh, on their uh, daily class schedules, uh, making sure they're utilizing the uh, services uh, to succeed, as well as uh, ushering them down into the uh, group if they don't know, and um, stay in the recruitment mode for the group. You're a student at ICC. What is your uh, What are you studying for? Uh, right now, I'm um, just getting my uh, associates in general education. Um, that's about it, associates. And what are your hopes for after ICC? Well, after I uh, graduate from ICC, I hope to uh, enlist in the uh, Air Force. And now we're with Keith Jones, who's also an ambassador. But I want you to tell us exactly what Harvesting Dreams has meant to you. What Harvesting Dreams has meant to me right now is too much to explain, but I'm going to give you the primal basis of what it has done for me. It has opened my mind up to so many things and becoming a more um, powerful individual. Um, basically, it has opened my mind up to more deeper things and become more, becoming more of a philosopher. Coming into college, I was already serious about school, but uh, Harvesting Dreams uh, is amp it amplified it to like the 50th degree. So, you know, um, it has... It, opened me up a lot and allowed me to become more of a powerful leader. It's basically aimed at African American males because we have problems unlike any other race, but it's for anyone. We don't discriminate against anyone. We want any and everyone to come out and join uh, if you're an ICC. And for the conference, um, it's a, I mean, it's awesome. Last year we had, it, it was a lot of people that I can't even count, but it's very awesome. We, and we invite anybody to come out and join us and have fun with us. talk to you as the principal. I want to talk to you as a mom. Because if any of you have been in my office, all you have to do is look on the wall and you will see four beautiful black young men. And every single day, since my son, his birthday is actually September 11th, so I remember when that happened. But every single day that I wake up, since I gave birth to my first son, I have done everything I possibly could to make sure that they don't end up where they are. And you guys, you guys may not have people at home that will be honest with you, that show you that they care and they love, love you. But every day you wake up and come to Tree Wind, you have a legion of people. We are not here because somebody told us this is where we had to be. We're here because we want to be, because we made the choice to be here. And so I'm sitting back there and I'm listening. And I know the students that they're talking about. Because you walk around here like you're too good to be corrected. Like you're too good to say hi to smile, to wear the, cro the proper clothes. Guys, you have a choice now. When you woke up this morning, and those of you who filled City Hall today, because you woke up and you decided, I'm not gonna wear that uniform today. You made a choice. But guess what? When you end up where they are, your choices are all gone. All gone. Now, when the question was asked, do you know people in prison or in jail? I raised my hand too, because I have family members who are where they are, who have been where they've been, and they are haters. They wish to God that they would have listened. Wish to God that they would have listened. Because right now, what kind of quality of life do they have? when you have a prison record, when you've been in jail multiple times, your opportunities are zero because no one wants to employ someone who cannot follow the rules, who don't care what time they show up, who just simply don't care. I wouldn't hire somebody like that because it's only a matter of time before you don't show up to work here or you come and you're dressed 
like you're going to a club instead of coming to work. So I really, really hope that you guys are listening and paying attention to what everybody up here has said, because these are not actors. This is real life, and we only get one chance to do this. One. People think we are crazy and insane to be down here with you guys. I call them liars. Oh, yeah. how many people have written each and every child in this building off. They don't think you deserve an education. They don't think you deserve good teachers. They didn't think you deserved a clean school. They didn't think you deserved people who cared about you. They have written you off. So when we take the time to stand in front of you and try to lead you and guide you in the right direction, it's for your sake, not ours. I've been to college for 10 years. Oh, yeah. I don't have one degree. I have three master's degrees. Yeah. And it wasn't easy, but it was worth it because it landed me here with you guys. And I'm telling you, this is a year and experience that I know I will never, ever forget because every single day, I get to come to work with some of the most beautiful and talented students I have ever met in my life. And I truly, truly mean that. I'm trying to hold back tears. Guys, I have cried so much in these past 10 days, but they have been tears of joy because every single day when people told us, those kids aren't going to make it, we see you making it. Those kids aren't going to achieve. We see you achieving. Those kids can't walk down the hall in a single file line and be quiet. But what do we see every day? Exactly what they said could not happen. So I don't know about you, but I enjoy haters. Nothing gives me more pleasure than proving people wrong. Oh, yeah. It is the fuel to my fire. Your interventionist, Mrs. Rutherford, I was just talking to her yesterday. And she said, you know, she, when she first um, got the position and they had all these trainings over the summer, and then people would go around and they say, oh, I work at Charter Oak. Oh, I work at Keller. And then they get to her. I work at Tree Wind. And they look at her. Like, she's crazy. Like, what are you smiling for? Why are you happy? She is proud. But she went to a meeting yesterday, and the times have changed in 10 days. Because when people asked her yesterday, where do you work? And she said, Tree Wynn, oh my God, I got to get out of here. Guys, people want to come down here and see the great things that they hear are happening here. You are truly making haters and liars <laughs> And we know it's not easy. Change is hard. Okay? Change is very hard. And we understand that. But we just ask you, stop fighting us. Some of you, you leave here and you become the adults in your household. You were the ones responsible for taking care of your brothers and sisters, your cousins, and probably some of your moms and dads. But here you get the opportunity to be a child. Because some of you, a lot taller than me, but you're babies. The world out there is hard. We're trying to make it easy for you in here. So stop fighting us. And those of you who, after we leave today, and after you go home for the weekend, you'll come back on Tuesday, and you'll still think you are too cool. But let me tell you, you are starting to stick out like a sore thumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs>